Well, good morning. I'm Dr. Cynthia Morris. I want to welcome you to Family Dominion Ministries. We're helping to equip families to take dominion over all the works of the enemy. And I hope that you are being very studious and persistent in following the teaching that we've been doing on uh, fighting for your family in the end times. I just want to take a second to uh, to thank uh, a number of you. I've been, as I've been out and about and, and doing a little bit of shopping, I've had people to come up to me in places like HEB and in Walmart. And they will tell me, and even at the church that I attend, um, uh, they'll say, you know, I've been, I've watched you on television and I've been listening to the program and that the program's really helping me and helping my family. Uh, you know, it's, it's really uh, so encouraging for me to know that what, we're, what I'm teaching on is making a difference in your family. Uh, so if you see me out, please don't be afraid to come up and say hello. Um, and if you need a little bit of prayer, I'll be more than happy to pray for you right there on the spot. So, but I am extremely thankful that people are watching and even more thankful to God that this word is helping to transform your life. So uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get into prayer and we're gonna get right back into the teaching on fighting for your family in the end times. This will probably take us through for the rest of the year. Um, and then we'll, I'll just see what God would have me to look at next year. We'll just, we'll just have to see, amen. So let me pray and then we will start. Um, uh, we'll start the teaching and allow the Spirit of God to move as he sees fit. So fathers, always thank you for all the people who are watching. Thank you for the opportunity to stand behind this pulpit, God, and to be able to minister your word. Again, it's something I don't take lightly. Thank you, God. As always, I ask that uh, as I decrease, I ask that you would increase, that you would rise up inside of me, Lord, that you would speak through my mouth, think through my mind, Lord God. Bless your people as they listen to your word. And I thank you, Lord, for this word to transform them. And, it, and as a result, to transform their situations, Father, whether it's marital, financial, if they need healing, God, whatever it might be that you would move in their lives. And in advance, I give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. And sir, it's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. So we're still talking about fighting for your family in the end times. So what I'm going to kind of shift to, we've talked about different rhema words that I told, that I share with you, that God shared with me. Um, and I'm going to shift a little bit from that because I think we've covered as much of that as I feel that the Lord would have me to cover. So I'm, I'm going to shift over to, to praying, to praying for your family, which is a part of this, this whole issue of standing and fighting for your family in the end times. Uh, prayer, uh, in, in my spirit, what I sense, is that prayer is becoming increasingly important in these end times. And I know a lot of people, they think that, you know, uh, well, you know, let's just pray, you know, as if, as if to say that prayer has no power or prayer is just some sort of waste of time. Prayer is extremely, extremely powerful. And I can tell you this, we, we, we sorely underestimate, in my opinion, and this, not just my opinion, I, I believe that, that the Lord would himself would even say that as a body, we really don't pray enough, you know. And I think it's because we underestimate the power, the power of prayer or we allow too many things to come in and to occupy our time where we cannot give ourselves to times and to seasons of prayer, you know. But God wants us to know that prayer is powerful. I think about that scripture over in James chapter 5, verse 16. It says that the fervent heartfelt, effectual prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available, dynamic in its working. Yeah, and that's not the King James Version translation. I can't recall exactly which translation that is. But the point being is that, and I think it's a beautiful translation, by the way. The point being is that prayer makes tremendous power available. Now, that's scriptural prayer, not just any prayer. We've got to be praying what God's word says. We've got to incorporate that into our prayers. But prayer can open up the floodgate and it can cause things to happen in your life that you could not work out in your own power or might in a thousand years. Prayer can change in a minute, in a day, in a week, in a month. You know, now sometimes there are times where it takes a little bit longer, you know, but prayer is still an effective means. And it is a mandate that God has given us. God does command us to pray, you know. So I, I do believe, again, that prayer is going to only incre increase in its importance in these end times because 
And again, I'm not a prophet of doom and gloom. I'm not even claiming to be a prophet. But I am saying, based upon what the Bible is telling us about end times, that we can expect that things will continue to erode. I hope that your hopes are not planted in this world system, which is basically governed by the God of this world, Satan himself. Okay, so I hope that you don't have any type of faith that your that your life is not rooted in this world system because this world system is going to it's going to pass it's going to collapse okay so it's not a reliable thing so we've got to be plugged in into things that are eternal god's word our relationship with god everything that he has provided for us through his word so if we do that we're going to be in pretty good shape you know so you're, what you're going to have to do, if you want to be able to make a difference in your family and in your family's lives, you're going to have to begin to pray scriptural, fervent, and militant prayers. Militant intercession. I mean, interceding for your family in ways that maybe, typically, you have not done over the past years. We're not in like regular times, folks. I mean, you can just look around the world and look at the things that are going on. Look at the chaos that's happening in families. Look at the world system, how every system is beginning to collapse and fall apart at the foundation because the foundation is not a scriptural foundation. You know, so if, every, if all your hopes are in that, again, it's going to fail. So the only hope that we have is being under the umbrella of God, and that comes from our relationship with him. And then we've got to make sure in conjunction with that that we are praying intercede for your family so not just so your family can survive these end times but so that even in the midst of chaos your family can thrive you know you can thrive go back to genesis and you'll see when there was a famine in the land the bible said that isaac and even abraham that although famine was all around them god continued to cause them to increase financially so it doesn't matter what's going on around you you and your family can Serve, not just again, not just survive, not just keep your head above the water, but God can cause you to, to survive and to thrive and to prosper. That's what he wants. I must have telling you that bad times are not going to come because they will. But what's, what's more important in the bad times coming is are you prepared for those times because they're going to come. You know, you're going to have challenges to your family that you're going to have to deal with. And prayer is one of the most important weapons that God has given us to use to help us out in those types of situations. You know, so we need to do it. Again, I don't think that we're praying enough. We're not. You know, and I bet if you go to many churches and stuff on the times where they have intercessory prayer, there are lots of people that are not showing up. If you go there on a Saturday and look at who's at prayer, then go on a Sunday morning, there are far more people in church on Sunday mornings than are probably in prayer on Friday or Saturdays when the church has its regular intercession. So, you know, so you do need to be praying at church as a part of like the corporate body. But also, you need to be also praying at home. So there should be prayer in the home as well. Times where you have prayer time to pray for your family and your family's needs. Amen? You know, so simply stated, I've, asked, I've had people to ask me, what is prayer exactly? Well, prayer really, the, a, a real basic and simple definition for prayer is that prayer is really a talking to or communicating with God. That's all it is. It's just, I mean, God, the, the purpose that God gave his son, Jesus Christ, the whole plan of redemption was designed to reconcile man back to God so we could be back in fellowship with him because before that we were separated. That sin separated us. The fall of Adam separated us from God. So when Jesus came and paid that price and the plan of redemption was complete, then that gave us access back to God through his son, through the, through the blood of his son, through that sacrifice by accepting his son, amen, into our hearts, then by using his name, using that authority that he gave us, we're able to have access back to God. And I tell you, it is an absolute, and let me say this with as much conviction as I can muster, it is an absolute honor and privilege to be able to pray and to be in communication with the God of this universe. I don't think that we realize the enormity that goes along with prayer having access to God anytime you need him day or night. It's not like you, can, you have to pull a number. It's not like you have to wait, like you would wait in some department store forever before God shows up and says, here I am. The minute that you hit your knees, and you don't even have to hit your knees, the minute that you cry out to him, he's there. 
Actually, he's already there. He's just waiting for you to call on him. So that's an awesome privilege that God has made that accessible to us. See, I don't think people realize, you know, all the things that prayer provides for them. Because I think if they did, they would do it more. If they realized the power that goes along with prayer, they'd pray more. If they realized who they were praying to, literally the only person in heaven and earth that can help you to resolve the problems that are going on in your family, you'd pray more. You pray more. If you realize the amount of comfort that that could bring you, the amount of peace that that can bring you, you would pray more. I know that whenever I'm going through a crisis, whether it's with my family or if it's at work or whatever it might be, there is a tremendous amount of peace that literally floods my soul, steadies my mind when I get before God and cry out to him. And I'm telling you, you don't have to come up with some flowery prayer. God is not interested in the thieves and the fowls. What God wants for you to do is to be honest with him, to, to cry out, to call upon him, to let him know what you're going through, not like he doesn't already know, and to seek him and, and to ask him, Lord, I need your help. What do I need to do? And God, invade my situation, invade my husband, invade my wife. Lord, begin to work in my children. God, my family, my home, my marriage is a mess. And Father, it's not going to get better unless you step in and you direct us and help us. Help us and Father, get us back on the right track that we're supposed to be on. You know, now I'm not saying that things happen just like that when you pray. Sometimes they do, but at other times they don't. But if you don't pray, you're almost guaranteed not to have any type of solution or resolve with your problems. So the best thing for you to do is to seek God and to pray. Seek Him with all your heart and to pray. Amen. Father, thank you for all the families, Father, that are watching. Thank you, God, for helping them, Lord God, to really begin, really begin to get a revelation of what prayer is, God. It's not just something to take up our time. It's not something, Father God, that we do to just check off the list. Yes, I prayed the day this morning. I prayed at noon. I prayed tonight. It's not some uh, ritual, God, that has lost its value and its meaning. But Lord, it's something that you've given us so we can stay in contact with you, so we can seek you. And not just when we are in trouble, God, but also to seek you and fellowship with you, even when everything is going good, to say thank you, to say I love you, to say I appreciate you. And so, Lord, I pray for all the families out there that you would move into their lives, move upon their hearts, invade their situations, God. I pray there will be a turnaround for each and every one of them, that they'll know, God, that you are a big God and that you care about them, Lord God, that you know their hearts and know their problems and that you and you alone, sir, are the solution to every problem that they have. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a blessed week. Thank you.